Now, as we explore in other parts of this course, we've known about the sun, obviously, and planets for eons. But what about asteroids? If they're so small, have we, have, have we always known about them? Or when have they come around? Well, if you look at our solar system, you see the inner planets and then the outer planets. And there's yep. a rather big gap between them. Yep. And this has been known ever since people worked out the orbits. Yep. And people often thought that maybe there's something in that gap. And eventually, in 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi discovered an object orbiting in the gap, which was Ceres. Okay. And in short order, a bunch of other things, planets as they then called them, orbiting in the gap were discovered. So wait, wait they were called planets? Oh yeah. Because everything that moved across the sky was called a planet. Planetos Wanderer, remember? Ah, so just because they were wandering, they moved across the sky. Well, could it? Yeah, well, okay. not following the stars, but there was a difference. Yeah. So, I mean, a long time ago, everything that, everything, all the planets were just dots that wandered across the sky. That's right. This was just a fainter dot that wandered across the sky, so it looked like other planets. Okay. The trouble is, for all the other planets they knew about then, which is all the ones up to Neptune, the eight planets, yep. they all, we looked at them with a telescope, appeared to be a little disk. Yep. They couldn't really see any much details, but they could see a disk. But when they looked at these new ones, they didn't look like a disk. Even with the most powerful telescope in the early 19th century, they just looked like a dot. Okay. And that's why they were called asteroid. Aster uh... being the root of star. Because it looked like a star, but it wandered. So they were wandering stars. So they were purely wandering stars in a way that the planets were moving, but did slightly look different. They looked similar to the distant stars with the telescope. But people called them planets at the time. Yep. So if you were doing an introductory astronomy course in you know, 1830, it would have told you about the 13 planets. The normal ones we know up to Uranus, plus yes. Ceres, Juno, Pallas and Vesta. So, but you said there was like a million, two million, there was a bunch of them. Yeah, starting in the 1840s and 1850s, telescopes got better. People started to find more of them, and more, and more, <laughs> and more. And, I mean, they didn't, they didn't know about millions of them, but there were certainly hundreds and then thousands. More than enough you would want to remember, right? And this point, you know, that, that chart you have on your, your classroom in primary school of the planets were starting to get a bit unwieldy. Trying to create a mnemonic device that incorporates 400 names probably was a bit much. Yeah, and so uh, it became clear, most of these things were all swarming around in, in between Mars and Jupiter. And so it was clear we needed another category here. Okay. Previously, everything that went around the sun was a planet. Yep. But that was not going to cut the mustard. So these ones got called either minor planets or asteroids. So these were all of these things in this gap that was noticed that moved around the sun, but were star-like and in a very particular point. So this is kind of reminiscent to the debate about whether Pluto is a planet, which we'll get to later in this course. That's right. They didn't have an international astronomical union out there to decide these things, but I can imagine the debate, especially the Italians. I discovered Ceres was discovered in Italy. We've got to keep it as a planet. No, but there are so many, we can't. And so, uh, anyway. <laughs> there really are some reminiscence about the debate about Pluto, <laughs> as we'll get into here. Yes. Um, but the basic reason why these things look like stars is because they're small. Okay. So Ceres is the biggest, um, but here is Ceres and Vesta, and the that's biggest the, and the third biggest, and that's the compared moon. to the moon, and the moon is pretty small. Yeah, I mean, the moon is smaller than a bit of Mercury, which is even smaller than the Earth, which is that. So these things are relatively tiny, even the biggest one. Yeah, and that's why they're sort of like, like dots. They just didn't have powerful enough telescopes. Even with modern adaptive optics telescopes, you can just barely make them out. The pictures we see here are taken with space probes that went close. So really, the reason why is because they were so small, we couldn't see them that much. And in fact, we're only fooled by these pictures because we've been luckily able to get close to a few of them. That's right. Um, and if you look at the mass of these things, it turns out that Ceres, which itself is pretty pathetic, is like, is a, like third. a third of yeah. the entire mass of the asteroid belt. And then you've got the other, a few other of the big ones and then all the small ones. And it all adds up, if you add all of them together, to maybe about 3% of the mass of the moon. So, okay, so these things are really small, very not massive, very tiny, and in a very clear part of the solar system. Yeah, not that clear. I mean, here's okay. the orbits of the ones we know about as of a couple of years ago. Yep. And the vast majority are between um, the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, but there are some spreading elsewhere. So they're not just in the asteroid belt? No, that's right. And the asteroid belt does not look like people think it does. Yeah, I think everyone thinks that it looks like this. Yeah, yeah, you were to, you know, be steering and trying to avoid asteroid belts. I mean, heaven knows how many science fiction movies have had hiding in the asteroid belt, I mean, Star Wars. And, That's right. And uh, 
almost every series, it's a, it's a science fiction cliche. Yeah. They, they go and hide and they all look like this. Huge rocks floating next to each other. I guess it's a lot more exciting. So what does it really look like? It looks something like this. Where are the asteroids? Well, exactly. If you're in the middle of the asteroid, you probably won't see any. Because, yeah, there's a million of them, but they're small and they're... It's a lot of space. Space is big, remember. So in fact, if you're sitting in the middle of the asteroid, when you look around, you will see stars and maybe Jupiter and Mars. And you'll be lucky if you see any asteroids at all with the naked eye. If you do, it could be that, that dot there is an asteroid. So they're and not the only way you tell is that that dot moved over there in a few minutes. So because they're so small and because there's so many of them or such a large area, it's really not that crowded. It's really not crowded at all. If it was as crowded as that simulation, they'd be colliding all the time. Okay, interesting. If, yep. they, if it was like this, it wouldn't stay like this for more than a few they minutes. They would just be destroyed or... A lot of them would gather together and clump together with their gravity and form a planet. Okay. Or if they were hitting fast, they'd break into pieces and turn into dust. But they wouldn't stay as big lumps as close together, because if they were big lumps as close together, they would either merge or break up. They wouldn't stay like this. Okay. So this is not what the asteroid belt looks like.